Hiya guys, so I was sent a video, I was sent a video of a guy trying to do the toucan heater in a plant pot. So I sat watching him do it and it was a bit like watching somebody in slow motion get into their car, point it at a wall and press a foot down on the accelerator as hard as possible. You just knew what was going to happen. It was a car crash waiting to happen and I was sat watching him do this and surprisingly enough the result he got wasn't brilliant and it scared the bejesus out of him. So the rest of the video is him pointing to it and going this is dangerous and I thought wow. I mean there was only one dangerous thing in that video and that was the guy doing the video. I just couldn't believe it. Hey. And it gave me a huge crisis of confidence because this video warning you of the, <laughs> the dangers of something. I mean, one, you just know that the people who need to watch it, they're not going to bother watching it. And two, the people who are watching it actually don't need to because they've got the common sense required. And it's a little insulting and a little condescending. However, I feel I should make it anyway. So hopefully, the people who watch his video can point him at some of the things that he might have done that would stop him from having to change his underpants. The thing about it is you're playing with fire. And, and who, who in their right mind would go into their living room, stack up some wood in the middle of their carpet, pour a load of petrol and chuck on a match and say, that's dangerous. <laughs> it's not dangerous. The idiot who's doing it is a danger to himself and everybody around him. I mean, when you're playing with fire, obviously, you don't put it on something flammable. I mean, it's why fireplaces have a hearth. A hearth is just a great big lump of stone. It can't burn and so it's okay to light a fire in there. It's the same thing. I did these experiments on a piece of tile because it can't burn. I didn't do the experiments near to some curtains with my cat trying to walk past and lots of little children running around wearing polyethylene clothing. The whole lot's going to go in flames if you do that. You do it in an area where it can't burn, particularly if you've never done something. Because if you do something that for the very first time without due regard to controlling the situation, simply everything from walking down the stairs, going to the supermarket, eating your dinner is dangerous. You can drown in that much fluid. So if you stick your face in a bowl of tomato soup and breathe in deeply, you're gonna die. Everything is dangerous if you do it in an uncontrolled way. So obviously, control what you're going to do. And the control is, I mean, it's stupidly simple, hey? Uh, don't do it in an area that's going to burn. Do it on a bit of stone. Do it in your garage. Do it away from the house. Do it in a bucket of sand. Just something which isn't going to burn. Don't do it on a pile of plastic bags while opening cans of petrol. I don't know. And the other thing. In a controlled situation, of course, you strike a match. Who's just scared of a match? It's a match. Why? Because there's a toothpick piece of wood. Do it in a small way. Don't do a couple of gallons. Do a couple of milliliters. That way, if you do spill it, it's going to burn off in about 30 seconds or so. It's not going to run away in an uncontrollable flood of fire. Nobody should be doing this in an uncontrolled way if they've never made something like this before. Of course, plenty of people have made their own heaters, made their own fires, got log burners, got fuel, solid fuel fires, got coal burners, got all kinds of stuff, and they're perfectly safe because they know what they're doing. They're doing it in a controlled way. They don't light the fire and flick coals around the living room, hoping to heat sections of the living room. So do it in a controlled way, which means, so area it can't burn, small amount till you get used to it and you've got the thing working, and then when you're actually running it, run it on a non-combustible surface. When I run mine, I run it on a piece of tile, 12 millimeters thick, 600 millimeters, so just over half a meter by half a meter. It's a big area that this thing runs on. So it can't burn. And that's all there is to it. Because people then get carried away with um, 
Okay, you've got an open flame. What about CO2? What about carbon monoxide? What about ventilating the room? Guys, it's a flame. If you burn anything, you're going to produce carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and use up the oxygen. So, if you have anything you're burning, so a propane heater, kerosene heater, gas fire, uh, log fire, coal fire, anything at all, you should be doing it with ventilation, CO2 monitors, and carbon monoxide monitors. Of course. That's why they put a carbon monoxide monitor in your gas boiler. Because... Got a flame! You're burning something! It's going to use up the oxygen, it's going to produce carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, and you need to be aware of that. But that's true of or any open flame. And of course, we've had open flames for tens of thousands of years. We've had sealed houses and central heating and um, flame heated air conditioning for tens of years. There's plenty of experience with it. Unfortunately, of course, there's always the Darwin Award and there's always going to be somebody who gets into the car, points it at the wall and presses the accelerator full pedal. So, I should warn you, I guess, that if you're going to do these experiments, do them in a controlled manner, do them in a small amount first, get used to it, do it in an area that can't be combustible until you are used to it, and then when you do use it, make sure that it's in an area that can't combust of some kind of fireplace or some kind of earth, like an, a non-combustible stone large enough to contain any spill. Make sure you've got a spill kit, a fire extinguisher, some sand laying around. Make sure you've got carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide <laughs> monitors. And if you have checked out your common sense before you enter the door, then don't do it. Now, of course, I don't want to scare the bejesus out of people, nor do I want people to feel that I'm condescending and arrogant, because I'm not. I think you should be experimenting, but if you're experimenting and doing something like this guy did, the thing to blame is not what you're experimenting with. The thing to blame is you. You're the danger for not doing it. So this guy, I mean, if it was me, I would not have made a YouTube video out of that, because that just tells me the guy hasn't got a clue what he's doing, has no sense of his own safety, and he was the danger. If it was me, I would have kept my mouth shut. But he's quite vociferous about it and ignorant of his own role in the danger, because as they say in health and safety, and this escapes me uh, why people don't listen to this, health and safety is a dual responsibility. It's about you assessing what you're doing and doing it in a way that keeps it safe. And it's just not that difficult. It comes down to awareness, control. That's it. I suppose there are people who have no control and no awareness. But equally, the disappointing thing is this video, which is meant to encourage that, won't be watched by them. Oh well. Anyway, I thought I'd point that out to you because I was quite shocked at this chap and the way he behaved. So in all seriousness, if you're going to do this experiment, particularly if you've never done it before and you want to build yourself a heater, do it in a controlled way. Start small, practice small until you're confident with it. Make sure you do it in an environment where there's no possibility of fire, like in a non-combustible surface. And make sure you have the right equipment to control that fire, which means a bucket of sand or some way of smothering the flame. Anyway, I hope it was helpful. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.